The U.S. is facing its biggest legal challenge to abortion rights in almost three decades. Mississippi is asking the Supreme Court to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade ruling and to uphold a state law that bans abortions after 15 weeks. So far, the high court's conservative majority indicate they may side with the state and make sweeping changes to abortion rights in the U.S. Joining us now to tell us more about the possible outcome here is Anisha Singh. Anisha is the Director for Judiciary and Democracy Affairs at Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Anisha, welcome to Quick Take and thanks for being here. Tell me what your reaction is to the response that we're hearing from these conservative judges. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, you know, what we're hearing today isn't surprising. We have been sounding this alarm for years as President Trump and uh, Mitch McConnell broke every rule possible to put three justices with records hostile to our rights on the court. And so what we saw today um, is not surprising, but it is devastating. We saw now that there is a majority of the court willing to turn back the clock nearly 50 years and unravel the core principles of Roe um, by allowing this Mississippi ban to, um, to ban abortion at 15 weeks um, to stand. Um, you know, we do not know how the court will rule. Um, the fact that whether Roe v. Wade remains a law of the land is still up for debate, and the fact that that is up for debate is shocking. Mm. Um, but you know, to be clear, Roe barely exists for now for, for many, and any decision that this, um, this comes out of this court um, stands to, to kind of destroy that even more and, and really put our fundamental freedom at risk. I want to read a quote from you from Chief Justice John Roberts. Earlier today, he said, if it really is an issue about choice, why is 15 weeks not enough time? Can you give me a response to that, Anisha? I mean, it's a slippery slope, right? Our right to abortion is not the only right at stake. There's so much at stake when we're talking about this case. Um, we know that this is about 15 weeks, but we know there are several bans across the nation that are being discussed that are less than that, six weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. Um, and this is about our fundamental right um, to our bodily autonomy. Um, and this is not up for debate. It's offensive when they're trying to ban um, you know, abortion and when they're trying to also ban birth control, and which is also out of reach for so many people. This is about making decisions for oneself. Um, and that is, the, that is the issue here. Um, you know, we do not want that slippery slope. We do not want to take away that right. Roe has made it clear um, that a, a, a woman, a person has a right to choose. I'm curious about whether you, it sounds like you're really concerned about the slippery slope, but I'm also wondering what concerns you about if states are really making this decision one by one on their own, what does that mean for what the electorate looks like moving forward and what the country starts to look like moving forward? This is something that is on a lot of folks' mind, you know, and it's clear that this is something that has not just come out of the blue right now either. In 2021 alone, there have been nearly 600 abortion restrictions that have been introduced for, uh, nationwide mm -hmm. um, with more than 100 enacted into law. Um, so this is something that we're seeing across the nation and people are paying attention. We know that 80% of people in this country don't wanna see Roe overturned. They wanna see Roe to be the, the law of the land. Um, abortion is popular, people are watching. And you know we know that uh, this is going to impact so many people. If the Supreme Court overturns Roe, 26 states could move to ban abortion. That leaves over 36 million people who could become pregnant in a growing abortion desert. Um, across the South and Midwest, and it affects millions of people um, who are paying attention. So politicians need to be paying attention um, to what the people want. They need to be paying attention to these rights that are at risk and, and the need to protect our health care. Mm, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. What would you want uh, the, the conservative judges here to know about the health care implications of abortion access? Absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing in Texas is really just uh, a, a great example of what we could expect to happen nationwide um, if this, um, if Roe were to be overturned. We're already seeing um, women and people having to drive hundreds, if not thousands of miles to get the care that they need um, outside of their home state of Texas. Um, you know, we're seeing that people are being forced to remain pregnant against their will. Um, folks are, we're hearing these heartbreaking stories and folks are really panicking, trying to figure out what to do when they had relied on Roe v. Wade to be the law of the land um, as they were planning their lives, as they are uh, navigating their lives um, through this moment. So this is a cruel and inhumane and unacceptable 
place to put individuals, and we fear this will become the norm in the U.S. if Roe fails. I'm curious to what extent you feel that Roe is on solid ground here. How concerned are you about the future of Roe v. Wade, and for that matter, Planned Parenthood versus Casey as well? Look, we don't have a crystal ball into you know how the Supreme Court will decide this case, and we but we will uh, you know and we are preparing for whatever is is to come um, and whatever outcome comes. You know, Planned Parenthood. Um, is here to fight. Um, we have been preparing for this moment. We are always, um, you know, keeping our patients and health centers in mind. Um, what I'm hopeful is that everyone, again, the justices are keeping in mind the 80% of the American people um, that don't want to see Roe overturn and the 50 years of precedent and the 36 million people of reproductive age that could lose abortion access. Um, so that's our hope. Um, and we will be there to fight regardless of what happens. Given public support for abortion access, like you just mentioned, what do you make of the political battle going on here? I know you mentioned the statistic of over 100 abortion restrictions passed in the U.S. just in the first nine months of 2021. Uh, what do you make of that? You know, this has been a systematic attack on our right to abortion um, and our right to um, our fundamental rights generally that we have been seeing over the year, over, over several years, right? We know that this didn't happen again overnight. Um, there have been um, anti-abortion politicians that have been emboldened by the courts um, where, you know, President Trump was able to appoint um many uh, uh, judges across the courts, I'm not just talking about the Supreme Court, we're talking about district courts, court of appeals, um, who have a hostile record on reproductive health care. That emboldened those state legislators to introduce these bills, um, you know, and, and now they are being challenged in those very courts that they were um, emboldened by. Um, so we know that this has, you know, been around for a while. This is something that has been a plan in the making. And now here we are at this pivotal moment um, where this case out of Mississippi is going to determine, um, you know, the, the outcome for millions of people across the country. Um, so it just goes to show how critically important it is to pay attention to what's happening with our courts, what our elected officials are doing, um, including, um, you know, appointing individuals to our courts um, so that we can make sure that we are, you know, uh, monitoring this. And that's something that we are doing at Planned Parenthood to make sure, um, you know, that we're being um, wholesome in our uh, efforts to fight this, um, whether we're talking about elected officials, or re whether we're talking about the Supreme Court, or whether we're talking about just making sure that patients have the information that they need. I also want to hear your response to the undue burden argument that we heard about in the Supreme Court today. Uh, this idea that, you know, uh, women are equal to men now, and so they don't necessarily have an undue burden if they have to have a child um, because they have access to capital. What is your, your response to that argument? I mean, I think Justices Sotomayor and Kagan made it very clear. Unraveling this right would lead to questioning all of our other rights and liberties, such as who we can marry, how to form our own families. Um, the court would actually be abdicating its responsibility to protect every citizen of US equally, right? It's, it's because of knowing that we have that autonomy and that ability to plan our, our families that allows women to pursue careers, um, to advance and to um, you know, make those decisions for their lives. So this actually goes against that. And, you know, Justice Sotomayor made the harm of that very clear. Um, this impact would force uh, pregnancies and delivery and would fall on people of color, it would fall on women of color and women with low incomes. And that is exactly how you remove and, and kind of uh, 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 impede on that, that equality factor. Yeah. Anisha, final question for you. What is your message to women and individuals who are hearing about this and are concerned about their future rights and access to abortion? Look, right now, um, we are here, Planned Parenthood, Federation of America, Planned Parenthood Health Centers are here to answer questions. We are here to fight. Um, this is not over. We have to see what comes out of the Supreme Court. Um, we must continue to fight um, to make sure that Congress is also protecting abortion access by passing the Women's Health Protection Act, that state politicians are being held accountable and repealing unnecessary restrictions, um, and that we are all making sure that we are upholding those 50 years of precedent and doing everything we can to fight. And Planned Parenthood is here um, to do that as well. Anisha Singh, thank you so much for joining us. I should mention that Anisha is the Director for Judiciary and Democracy Affairs at Planned Parenthood Federation of America.